it says an ideal diatomic gas. So all this is important information. So let me highlight it as I go. Diatomic, that's important. The answer depends on it. It's a slowly compressed uh, adiabatically. So there's a lecture video that you should watch. I think I talk about this in the overview video. So you should watch chapter three overview to one third of its uh, original volume. So if we started out with some volume V naught, the final volume is one third V naught. What is its uh, final temperature? Okay. Um, I think it is giving all the um, necessary information. Uh, now, if you feel like it hasn't, that's where you should click on hint and it'll point you to the <laughs> links. And um, yeah, it, it particularly refers you to the adiabatic process pressure volume relationship that's derived in this section. And that's, uh, that's an important relationship that you have to know. Now you have to know it for this question and you have to know it for, um, well, for the heat engine cycle analysis that you'll be knee deep in uh, next week. So, so, you know, they go through the derivation here. You should, you know, read the derivation. And when you are done reading it, you'll kind of get to this expression, which is uh, what we are after. That this particular combination of quantities, pressure times volume, uh, just the volume raised to power of gamma is a constant value. So, uh, gamma, if you go back, it's defined as this in terms of those two specific capacities that we were talking about before. So uh, gamma is going to be a kind of a unitless number that's different for each type of gas, monatomic gas. So for monatomic gas, this will be um, doing this from memory, five over three, because um, if you refer back to the earlier question, the CV was D over two KB, CP was um, D over two plus one KB. So for monatomic gas, plug in D of three and plug it in here, you get five third. So this is for monatomic. For diatomic, you will get, um, so CV will be five halves on its own. So five halves plus one, seven halves. So it'll be seven over five. So this gamma number, it depends on what type of gas you have. That's why the question told you what type of gas you have and you, um, you should pay attention to that. So let me just erase this. So I'm gonna just write down gamma equal to uh, seven over five and then write down that uh, adiabatic relationship. So, gamma is equal to seven over five for this question because of the diatomic condition or the specification. And the expression that I'll be using to work out the final temperature is the adiabatic um, pressure volume relationship, which is the pressure times volume raised to power gamma, this numerical parameter is constant. So from knowing that this is constant, I can set up something that looks like a conservation law equation. So I can write down this for at the beginning of the process. And then um, I can say that at the beginning of the process is the same numerically as that at the end of the process. So initial pressure, which I guess I'm not given, I'll rewrite it soon, uh, times the initial volume raised to power gamma what we can say is that that's equal to the final pressure times the final volume raised to power gamma. And I am given the final volume. So let me actually do that. And, and then I'll start counting unknowns and kind of try to look for ways to replace some of them. So pressure final times, so one third V naught raised to power gamma. Oh, uh, I see some simplification. I think uh, V naught cancels out. Because, uh, so, you know, distributing this exponent, I have a one third raised to power gamma and V naught raised to power gamma. I have V naught raised to power gamma on both sides. So I can cancel this with that. So good, I'm not given original volume. So 
I, I do think I kind of want to get rid of it. Um, so I guess in some sense, maybe this is the quickest way to do it. Uh, when you look at it, so you don't know initial pressure, um, but you do know the initial temperature. Um, and you don't know the final pressure. Uh, you know what, I think it, the combination is unwieldy enough that I will just use the systematic process, which is to use ideal gas law. So, so I have two unknowns or, um, well, yeah, I have two quantities that are either unknown or it's not something I'm interested in. So I have this initial pressure, which is unknown. And I have this final pressure, which is something that might be related to something I want to find, but it's not itself the thing I'm trying to find. So both of those have to go. So, and the way we are gonna get rid of it is through application of the ideal gas law, that pressure times volume is um, the number of gas molecules times Kb times the temperature. So what I do know is that initial pressure times initial volume, uh, N is gonna be constant was, and I'm given this initial temperature that's given there. Um, okay, let me just keep going. Um, I have uh, final pressure times Final volume is going to be NKB times final pressure, uh, sorry, final temperature. Ah, I think if I solve each of these four pressures and plug it in, you will see that something's cancel. You will definitely see N and K's cancel out. And we'll figure out, work out again if, uh, and you, how to cancel out some of the volume stuff. So um, I think, yeah, so we'll do that. So I, I want to do this systematically because it's very easy to uh, kind of confuse the process that you're working through. And uh, so let me just give myself a little bit more room here and then uh, let me write out what they will be. Um, so solving this each for pressure, I get this. Initial pressure is equal to and KB T naught over V naught. Solving this for final pressure is and KB T final over V final. So I'm gonna have to do one substitution just one more time because I was a bit premature in getting rid of V final, but let me keep going. <laughs> um, plugging in both of these into this equation this is what you're gonna end up with. Plugging in initial pressure, you get after, yeah, you get um, N, sorry, that color didn't look right to me. N KB T naught over V naught is equal to, and this was canceled out before, and I had the final pressure, and KB, T final over V final times the uh, one third raised to power gamma. And um, I almost have this only in terms of T final, except I just reintroduce the V final, which isn't really what I want. So I do have to replace this with what it is, uh, the one third V naught. So when I replace this with one third V naught, what you can do is, okay, if we not cancel out again, but I'm gonna have to absorb this one third into this entire thing, which will modify this exponent to, to gamma minus one. Uh, one third cancels out one factor of one third up here. So the exponent to gamma turns into gamma minus one. If any of that is confusing, put it in the chat. <laughs> or omit yourself and ask. Um, so, uh, some of the other unknowns simply cancel out and KB cancels out. So I don't have to worry about either of them. Uh, so this uh, looks like it's a sold for T initial. So I need to just flip it around to actually get to the T final, which is what they're asking. So when you go through that algebra, this is what you end up with. T final is equal to T 
t initial times and I'm just going to be dividing by this and there's different ways to do it. I guess the easiest way to write it down is to write it as one third raised to the power of minus gamma minus one because um, that's the recipro reciprocal. So I remember gamma is, uh, you know, seven over five. Then I think uh, I have everything I need to just uh, plug in numbers into calculator. So let me do that. Calculator here, um, initial temperature was 90 times the fraction, one third raised to power of, uh, and I guess I'll just, uh, let me uh, distribute the minus sign here. That becomes one minus gamma. So one minus, um, seven over five, seven divided by five. Uh, so I guess that's negative, yeah. So, you know, there are some things I could have simplified. No, I'll just leave it here. When I press equal, I should get a number that's bigger than 90 because with the adiabatic compression, the uh, temperature should go up. So I get something that's bigger than 90 Kelvin, 140 Kelvin, and that should be right. And so um, I think the, um, the, maybe the most difficult part in this question is kind of, well, uh, the, the first set of information that I highlighted, you kind of have to just know them. And I do recommend that you learn this early now so that when we start analyzing heat engine cycles, which can be more complex, just stuff like this comes more naturally to you.